too tiny for tea. Marty McKay was already five years old, but he was still the baby of the family. Can I have some tea too? Marty asked his mother. She drank her tea from a beautiful cup and stirred it with a silver spoon. No, Marty. You're too young to drink tea. But, why? Marty asked. Because your fingers are too tiny to hold the cup. And tea is too hot for you, baby. I'm not a baby, Marty said. I'm five and a half. Marty went out to the yard. His brother Ralph was playing basketball. Can I play too? Marty asked. Ralph bounced the ball up and down under Marty's nose and then threw it into the basket. No Marty, you're too young to play basketball. But, why? Marty asked. Because the basket is too high for you to reach. And the ball is too big for your tiny baby hands, Ralph said. I'm not a baby, Marty said. I'm five and three quarters. Marty went into the kitchen. His sister Jane was getting ready to ride her bicycle to the candy store. Can I go to the store to buy candy? Marty asked Jane. He could feel the wind in his hair and the candy on his tongue. No, you're too young to go to the store, Jane said. But why? Marty asked. Because the store is too far for you to ride to. And your baby bike is too slow. I'm not a baby, Marty said. I'm nearly six. Six? Jane laughed. You just turned five. Marty sat on the grass and watched his sister ride away on her bike. He started to cry. Marty's father was washing the car. He heard a tiny cry and went to find out what was wrong. Why are you crying? Marty's father asked. Because I'm too tiny to do anything. I wish I weren't the youngest one. Be careful what you wish for, his father said. Just then, Marty's mother came out to bring Marty's dad his tea. She patted her belly and smiled. We're going to have another baby, his mother said. And that means you're going to be a big brother, his father said. But, I'm too tiny to be a big brother, Marty said. I'm just a baby. The chickens take a holiday. The sun was about to rise on Farmer Tim's farm. Chester Chicken woke up the cows with his important news. The chickens are taking a holiday today, Chester Chicken said. Is that so, said Daisy the cow. What is the special occasion? Daisy the cow. We worked too hard this week, Chester said. You did? asked Daisy. Yes. We laid ten eggs this week, Chester said, and there are only five of us. Daisy smiled and nodded her head. Ten was a lot of eggs for five chickens. Enjoy your day off, she said. But what about us? The other cows said to Daisy. We gave Farmer Tim 100 pails of milk this week. There are only 10 of us. Daisy agreed with the cows too. 100 pails of milk would make a lot of cheese. 
But we can't take a holiday on the same day as the chickens, Daisy said. What would Farmer Tim say? Daisy and the cows moved over to a patch of grass to have their breakfast. The chickens are taking a holiday, Daisy told the trees. And we don't think it's fair. Trees. The trees were not happy with this news. I've dropped over 1,000 apples this season, one said. And I've had a million cherries picked said another. The wind blew and the trees put on their angry faces. We deserve a holiday more than the chickens, the trees shouted together. We worked too hard all season. This woke up the rake that was sitting on the grass underneath the trees. Have you heard the news? the apple tree asked the rake. The chickens are taking a holiday. They think they worked too hard this week. The rake stood up and announced its disapproval. I raked over one million leaves this year. And there's only one of me. If anyone deserves a holiday, it is a poor, tired rake. Just then Rowdy Rooster hopped on the fence. He looked up into the sky and began to crow. It was time for the farmer to wake up. The chickens and cows and trees waited for Farmer Tim to come out and pick up the rake. But a minute passed and Farmer Tim did not appear. Rowdy called two more times. Call him again, the chickens yelled to the rooster. He must be having a dream. Rowdy made one last call, and this time Farmer Tim woke up. But he didn't come out and pick up the rake, far more milk the cows, or check on the eggs underneath the chickens. Instead, he opened the window and shouted loud enough for everyone to hear. I worked too hard this week, I say. It's time I took a holiday. Good Neighbors After school one winter day, Jack's mother told him to go out and play in the snow. But it's so cold outside, mother. Jack said. Put on your coat and your hat and your mittens, his mother said. You can build a snowman before your father comes home. I'm going to need a carrot for the nose, Jack said. And I'll need some things for the snowman's hat and face. Jack got a bucket and collected everything he needed to decorate his snowman. His mother promised she would watch him build the snowman from the window. Outside, in his front yard, Jack started with a very small ball of snow. He got on his knees and rolled the snow into a big ball. At another window, someone else was watching Jack play. It was his new neighbor Naoko. Naoko asked her mother if she could go outside and help Jack build his snowman. It's very cold outside. Are you sure you want to go out and play? Her mother asked. Yes, mother. Naoko said. I will wear my coat and my hat and my mittens. Naoko's mother helped her put on her winter clothes and promised to watch her from the window. You can play until your father comes home, her mother said. Naoko ran outside to Jack's yard and asked if she could help him finish his snowman. Yes, please help me, Jack said. My father will be home from work very soon. Okay. What can I do? Naoko asked. I built my snowman's body with two snowballs. 
I need to roll one more for my snowman's head. But snowmen only have two snowballs. One is for the body and one is for the head, Nyoko said. No, snowmen always have three snowballs, Jack said. I don't think I need you to help me after all. Jack picked up some snow and made it into a small snowball. He got on his knees and rolled the snow away from Nyoko to make the snowman's head. Nyoko walked into her own yard and began to build her own snowman. I don't want to build a snowman with Jack anyway, she thought to herself. I'm going to make my own. Nyoko rolled two big balls of snow and put them on top of each other. When she finished that she took off her hat and scarf and decorated the snowman. Lastly, she found some sticks and pine cones and made her snowman's eyes and mouth and arms. Her mother clapped from the window. Jack made a hat for his snowman with his bucket. He used his mother's sewing buttons for the eyes and mouth. Lastly, he added a carrot for the snowman's nose. After he finished, Jack's mother smiled and pointed. His father was driving up the street. Suddenly a terrible thing happened. The head fell off Jack's snowman and crashed to the ground. Oh no! My snowman fell apart, Jack said, and my father is almost home. Nyoko heard Jack's cry and ran over to his yard to see what the problem was. I'll help you roll another snowball, Nyoko said. If we do it together we can finish it before your father gets home. Together, Jack and Nyoko rolled a new snowball. They shaped it with their mittens until it was round. Then they lifted it up onto the snowman's body and decorated it with the carrot and bucket and buttons. We finished it just in time, Jack said. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. I like your snowman better, Naoko said. Mine doesn't have a nose. Jack walked over to look at Naoko's snowman. He loved the pine cone eyes and mouth and the sticks for arms, but he knew it wasn't finished. Jack ran back to his snowman and pulled the carrot out. He broke it into two pieces and gave half to Nyoko. Hurry, Jack said. Your snowman needs a nose and your father is driving up the street too. Thank you, Nyoko said.